Hey Big E. Big E, are you gonna be in this video? You can say hello to everybody. You're wondering what we're doing. I guess we're gonna do we're gonna do the bookcase tour, Big E. Yeah. Oh, Bob, 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 Bob. Hi guys, Dane here and Big E. And today we're doing the latest instalment in my bookcase tour. So we are getting started with Hans Hershey, which is an H, and then we're moving on to the J's for Peter James. So bear with me while I get the books. Okay, so no, don't go. Where are you going? I set this up specifically so you could be in it. Oh no. And now your tail's in the way. What are you doing? Okay, he's gone. All right, we will continue from here anyway. So today we're getting started with Hans Hershey. So Hans Hershey is an indie writer. I guess you would call him an LGBT writer, LGBTQIA+. I think I got that right. We'll start here with The Fallen Angels of Karn Attacker. So this is about a young man called Hakan. His lover dies, I can't remember whether it's his boyfriend or his husband. And so it says here, still young and mourning the loss of his lover, Hakon is not ready to give up on his dream. So when a rich Englishman offers him the chance to join him on a tour of the world, Hakon takes it, daring to believe that his dream is finally coming true. But at what price? Very good novel, really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed all of these, to be honest. Because next up we have The Opera House. And so um, this is, right, let's see. So this one is about a guy called Raphael and uh, his, his son dies. And so because of this, he basically kind of goes into a decline. He, uh, he's not doing good at his job as, as an architect. Uh, his lover goes. He kind of loses his reputation. And then he meets this young kid, a homeless, maybe hopeless kid called Brian. And uh, he kind of sees his son in Brian a bit. So Brian kind of gives him a second chance. And this book's kind of all about... It's like a one massive redemption arc, really. Beautifully written. All of these are great. And uh, the third one here, we have uh, Willem of the Taffel, which is like post-apocalyptic. So basically, our world is gone. Everyone's kind of living inside this mountain. And there's this guy called Willem, who I think he gets... Um, does he get, yeah, he gets exiled, so he has to go to the surface. And then he finds like a whole new, you know, whole new life out on the surface. You know, there are other survivors. And uh, yeah. It's an epic tale of survival, second chances, hope, and undying love. Very impressed with Hans Hershey's stuff. I would uh, definitely check them out if any of those sound interesting. Especially for an indie writer as well. Early support of my book blog, Hans. Anyway, here we have Reed Hoffman and Ben Casanocha, the startup of you. Adopt to the, adapt to the future, invest in yourself, and transform your career. So Reed Hoffman is the co-founder and chairman of LinkedIn. I think he also invested in PayPal, various other things. And the idea of the startup of you, it's very much in these kind of the vein of these, you know, these self-help books about how you create your own personal brand. You know, all of us are our own startups, effectively. Here we have The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady by Edith Holden. This was recommended by uh, Hannah Tay here on Booktube, and I can confirm it was a good recommendation. Basically, Edith Holden was, uh, well, it's, it's, it is what it sounds like, The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. So we get to see bits of like her handwriting where she's written poetry here. That was Robert Louis Stevenson poetry. Some drawings of hazelnuts and acorns. We have her journal entries. So for example, July the 6th, third day of bright sunshine and fifth without rain. Miss F gave me some bee orchids this afternoon, which she had gathered growing wild in Berkshire. It's just charming, really charming book. You can get this in hardback as well, but the paperback's pretty beautiful too. Okay, here we have Gareth Holbrook. It's never easy these days. This is basically the memoirs of a hospital manager working within the NHS. You know how there's a lot of medical non-fiction going around at the moment? This is an example of that. It was uh, offered to me via my book blog. And because I work with uh, my, my client, um, Emmanuel Fombu, who is a medical writer, I thought it would be good to read stuff like this as well. Just to get, I guess, a wider view of the medical field. Here we have The Odyssey by Homer. This is a beautiful Oxford University edition version of this. And I read this earlier this year as one of my bedroom books. I'm awake. Why do I have an alarm set for 1708? Why, Biggie? He's still, he's still here, by the way. Hey, Biggie. Say hello. Biggie is a member of the Peter James uh, Pet Fan Club as well, which uh, we'll talk about Peter James in a bit. Anyway, really enjoyed this. Lovely. 
Next book. All right, so now we are on to the Nick Hornby in my collection. So, of course, we have About a Boy, which is the first Nick Hornby book that I read. I actually read this before watching the movie, and it's definitely better than the movie. There's, there's stuff that's kind of cut out for the movie, uh, which is a shame because basically... One of the main characters in this is really into Nirvana, and it's not really mentioned in the movie. You know, like the goth girl in the movie. In the novel, she's really into Nirvana, and they like break a shop window and steal a cardboard cutout of Kurt Cobain and stuff. And I believe it's Kurt Cobain's suicide happens during the novel as well. So, as uh, someone who used to be a big Nirvana fan, it's very interesting. Here we have How to Be Good. Honestly, don't remember that one as much. And I haven't read any more Nick Hornby yet, I don't think. But I have some more on my TBR. I have Slam up there. Here we have Faith Isabella Elizabeth Horn, Life in Assorted Poems. This is just a poetry collection I was sent for the blog. I'll read you a poem. A girl's best friend. Dark, medium and white. Sweet and bitter. Creamy and sharp. A girl's best friend in any event or drama. It's someone she can count on. Purple, blue, red and black, paper or plastic wrappers, the sun and heats its enemy. Missing apostrophe there. A bar or a square of goodness, a girl's best friend. Can you guess what it is? Here we have The House of Silk, which is the new Sherlock Holmes novel by Anthony Horowitz. And uh, it's, I read this when this first came out, which was, when was it? A while back. 2000 and well this edition is 2012 but it came out in 2011 I did enjoy it I thought it was good I thought Horowitz did a great job of kind of capturing the vibe of Sherlock Holmes obviously it's not quite the same as reading the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle originals but it is enjoyable enough you know definitely one to read if you are a Sherlock Holmes fan here we have Go Mobile by Gene Hopkins or Jeannie Hopkins and Jamie Turner and uh, this is part of the David Meerman Scott's The New Rules of Social Media series. Didn't really remember this too much. I mean, I never really got into mobile marketing, so I more read it as background reading, you know? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're into marketing and into mobile marketing now, it's probably worth a go. I imagine that with most things like that, the core principles stay the same, but the technology changes, you know? Someone's outside in their Volkswagen Golf playing music really loudly. Here we have Red Dwarf Program Guide by Chris Howarth and Steve Lyons. So it says here, thoroughly updated, lots of new stuff, totally and utterly everything, including season 6. So there, it's up to season 11 or 12 now. But um, yeah, it's still enjoyable enough. I mean, it's, it's a reference book, it's like a coffee table book. I did actually read it from cover to cover, but you know. Yeah, this edition published in 1995. First episode of Red Dwarf came out in 1988. And, like, the most recent series was a year or two years ago. So that's how out of date it is. But that, like, I, ha I read that during, like, my glory days of when I was really into Red Dwarf. Here we have Allotment Architecture by Peter Hughes. This is a Reality Street collection of poetry. So due to that, like, the publisher, they basically publish experimental poetry. I was actually a Reality Street supporter, so I probably have my name in this somewhere. Yeah, Reality Street supporters who have sponsored this book. I'm in there somewhere. And I'll read you a little bit of poetry from it to give you a feel for what it's like. She wants to know exactly how her baguette will be buttered. Sister Nancy, what you said about our fortune being founded only on our talents worried her a lot. Straightening doilies till they tear. Yeah. I think I did a good job of reading that. It has weird sort of punctuation and spacing and stuff. All that, all that jazz. Here we have Meet My Folks by Ted Hughes. This is for you, Miriam, if you're watching. Uh, Miriam from Between Lines and Life is a huge Ted Hughes fan. And this is children's poetry, basically. It's actually really pretty, this collection. I got it from a second-hand shop, I think. One of the old Faber and Fabers. I'm going to read you a poem called My Brother Bert. Pets are the hobby of my brother Bert. He used to go to school with a mouse in his shirt. His hobby it grew, as some hobbies will, and grew and grew and grew until. Oh, don't breathe a word. Pretend you haven't heard. A simply appalling thing has occurred. The very thought makes me iller and iller. Bert's brought home a gigantic gorilla. If you think that's really not such a scare, what if it quarrels with his grizzly bear? You still think you could keep your head? What if the lion from under the bed and the four ostriches that deposit their football eggs in his bedroom closet and the aardvark out of his bottom drawer all danced out and joined in the roar? What if the pangolins were to caper out of their nests behind the wallpaper? 
with the fifty sort of bats that hang on his hat stand like old hats. And out of a shoebox, the excitable platypus, along with the ocelot or jungle catapus. The wombat, the dingo, the gecko, the grampus. How they could shake the house with their rumpus. Not to forget the bandicoot, who would certainly peer from his battered old boot. Why, it could be a dreadful day, and what, oh, what would the neighbours say? The Man Who Remembered the Moon by David Hall. This is an uncorrected proof. I do remember this, actually. This story basically follows what happens when uh, this guy wakes up one morning and the moon's gone. No, it must be the evening, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. The, the moon does come out in the daytime. But anyway, this guy realises the moon has gone and he... He tries to tell other people the moon has gone and nobody's, nobody remembers it. So he's the man who remembered the moon. Not only is the moon gone, he remembers that it's missing and no one else does. That was really good, actually. I enjoyed that one. Here we have a ladybird book. This is The Story of Science by Edmund Hunter. And this is literally just, you know, the ladybird children's book talking about science. I mean, I'll read you a little bit. Let's, let's talk about uh, chemistry. For many centuries, chemistry or alchemy as it was then called, was thought to be a weird and mysterious subject. Alchemy originated about 100 AD in Alexandria and continued for another 15 centuries before the beginnings of modern chemistry. The alchemists believed that one metal could be changed into another and they were always looking for a magical formula which would turn ordinary metals into gold. They were also in search of a potion which would cure all ills. Fruitless though the search was, new chemical processes were discovered such as distillation which were to help chemists centuries later. At about the 8th century, the Arabs carried on the work of the Greeks, and although they made few great discoveries in chemistry, perhaps their careful records were their great contribution. Knowledge and ideas spread very slowly at that time, and much valuable information was never passed on at all. Without the records made by the Arabs, it is possible that most of Greek scientific thought might have disappeared or at least been lost for a very long time. There we go. Okay, then we have Aldous Huxley, Brave New World. So actually, here we also have The Doors of Perception. And I believe The Doors of Perception also included, yeah, Heaven and Hell as well. And uh, I've been trying to get one of my friends actually to read the, the Doors of Perception. Yeah, so Brave New World is basically like classic dystopia, I guess. Uh, it says here, may read as a grave warning of the pitfalls that await uncontrolled scientific advance. And then The Doors of Perception and Heaven and Hell, they're both two essays, both very interesting to read. I believe he wrote them while on mescaline. Here we have some, some books that I've just put under I for IAB, the Internet Advertising Bureau. So they sent me the Big Affiliate Marketing Handbook and the Programmatic Handbook, both pretty good ways to get into the, you know, the topics of affiliate marketing and programmatic. I imagine they're still not available anymore, but they're still on my shelves. Here we have Soviet Milk by Nora Ekstena, and I actually did a full review of this, which I'll put in the, the description and whatnot. And um, Ekstena is a Latvian author. I also met the translator of this. They're both women, which is pretty cool. And it says here, the literary bestseller that took the Baltics by storm, now published for the first time in English. And yeah, it's a beautiful book as well by Perrin Press. It's kind of about the relationship between a mother and her daughter. And uh, it's, you know, it's called Soviet Milk, but in Latvian, the title is Mother's Milk. So that kind of tells you a bit more, I think, gives you a bit more of an idea about the story. Here we have The Oatmeal, uh, How to Tell If Your Cat is Plotting to Kill You by Matthew Inman. And basically it's a series of different like comics and cartoons and whatnot. I will actually show you. It came with this poster as well. I think he's plotting to kill me. I'm not sure, but I think he might be plotting to kill me. Here we have Steve and Me, which I'm pretty sure should be Steve and I, but anyway, by Terry Irwin, My Life with Steve Irwin. So it's Steve Irwin's wife, like the memoirs of her life with Steve. I'm a huge Steve Irwin fan. I think he was just an inspiration. And uh, I've actually recently, with Becca, we've been watching Bindi's Boot Camp, which is like a kid's TV game show that is hosted by his daughter, Bindi. Here we have Prop by Peter Yeager. Peter Yeager was actually one of my lecturers at university. He taught me writing poetry. And he's also published by Reality Street. I don't think this edition is from them though. But um, someone's knocking outside and it's annoying. I will read you some of his poetry anyway. Very experimental again. Press your forehead to this golden stump. Flags curl slowly round. In winter warmth and gently now, there is no who to call. You're far away, a Hindi love song singing. 
pierces guts, rustles trouser hems. They catch the carpet, poke your finger through, a brassy gong, or all the breakfast, teaspoons, tinkle piercing, whom among them? Ranging over tree line, spurting for an instant. I could keep going because it's like a long poetic series. Okay, here we have Ollie Jacobs. He's a local High Wycombe author. So we have Strange Days in High Wycombe, which is set here in High Wycombe. Basically, this guy wakes up from his like drunken meanderings in High Wycombe and kind of tries to piece together the evening before, I guess. And then we have filmic cuts, suplex sounds of the 70s. And uh, these are short stories. Both recommended. We have Assholes A Theory by Aaron James. So, um, in the spirit of the mega selling on bullshit, philosopher Aaron James presents a theory of the asshole that is both intellectually provocative and ex existentially necessary. I don't know if I'd agree with all that. It was okay, it was interesting enough, but it basically defined what makes an asshole and says why people become one, you know? Here we have Henry James, The Turn of the Screw and Other Stories. I believe I read this for university. The Turn of the Screw is obviously a masterpiece. Probably about you a reread. I might reread that soon. It also has The Pupil and The Third Person. And then P.D. James, Death Comes to Pemberley. I picked this up earlier this year. This was actually a buddy read with a bunch of other people on BookTube. And so a bunch of us read it. I enjoyed it. I mean, I've actually not read any Jane Austen yet, but I do want to. So I'm going to fix that. And this got me wanting to read Austen, which is good. And I haven't seen the TV miniseries either. I think maybe if you're a big Austin fan or you've already seen the miniseries, you're not going to get much out of the book. But for me, just going into it, as like an Austin style murder mystery almost. I enjoyed it. And it's a beautiful copy of it as well. And finally we have my Peter James collection. So there's quite a bit of them here. Like I said, uh, Biggie is in the Peter James Pets fan club. He's also like, he's got a YouTube channel I would recommend checking out because he does like interviews with pretty well-known authors. And especially if you're a writer yourself, there's a lot for you to take from them. Uh, always very approachable as well, so I've been sent a few of these. I actually sent him a copy of my book, Driven, um, which I know I don't know if he'll ever read or not, but it was nice of him to let me send it to him, you know. And uh, he's liked and shared a few of my things in the past. So, Peter, if you're watching, thank you for the books. Keep going. Uh, so, anyway, we have A Twist of the Knife. So, this is a collection of short stories featuring Roy Grace, which is his well-known detective who's in most of these. And uh, this is actually where we get to meet him. And we get to see, you know, various different stories. It says, it combines every tale from the e-book bestsellers, Short Shockers 1 and Short Shockers 2. Uh, so, yeah. Then we have Billionaire. So, this was originally published in 1983. And, obviously, it, it isn't one of his uh, Roy Grace books. It's one of his earliest, perhaps his first. And uh, for that reason alone, it's worth picking up. Especially when you see someone... I mean, he's sold, like, millions of copies. So... There's something to learn there, you know, and I like to look at stuff like earlier books compared to later books. Still holds up pretty well, I thought. Maybe some of the technology references were a little bit dated, but it was, it was good overall, you know. Dead Man's Footsteps. So uh, this is one of the Roy Grace books. I can't, I'm not going to tell you too much about each of these because each of them has their own full plots. And one thing I will say about these is it's quite often difficult to tell whether you've already read them or not. Because there are so many books with dead in the title, as you're about to see. So, um, luckily, because I use my Goodreads, I can just go on Goodreads and, uh, you know, check whether I've got a specific book. But uh, I know my mum, for example, has picked up one of the books and started reading it and then realised she's read it before. But at the same time, I think she normally just finishes rereading it. So, so yeah, Dead Man's Grip. This is one about a woman who uh, just comes out of a traffic accident. Dead Like You. So uh, this is starts off at the uh, Metropole Hotel, B Brighton, Metropole, Metropole. I don't know. Uh, this this actually. Oh yeah, this is uh, bears a remark. The case bears a remarkable similarity to an unsolved series of crime in the back in, in back there. So re I'll read you this bit. Detective. In so I'll read you this bit quickly. Detective Superintendent Roy Grace soon realises that these new cases bear remarkable similarities to an unsolved series of crimes in the city back in 1997. Uh, I should mention actually here, all of these take place in Brighton. Harriet Rosie, if you're watching, I would definitely recommend checking out the Roy Grace books because, again, it's set in Brighton uh, here in the UK, which is where Harriet Rosie lives. And also, I mean, it's, you know, crime thrillers, you know? Here we have Dead Tomorrow. The body of a teenager dredged from the seabed off the Sussex coast is found to be missing its vital organs. Actually, as I'm going back through them and rechecking the blurbs, they are standing out to me more now, you know, but 
Looking good, dead. Du -du -du. Love you, dead. This is my one of my only hardbacks here. In fact, it is my only hardback. Not dead yet. Another Roy Grace one. Another thing I like as well is you can look at when they were published and see see this number go up because this is 11 million copies sold. This one doesn't say because this is an arc, but this is uh, the House on Cold Hill. Enter at your own risk. And this is like a ghost story. I did really enjoy this, actually. We have Want You Dead. So look, this is up to 15 million. And we have You Are Dead. And this one is 16 million. So yeah. So anyway, on that note, we have now come to the end of this edition of the Bookshelf Tour. I will be carrying on, obviously, with my next one from James onwards. So uh, yeah, we're up to J. I guess like M is the midpoint really. But I've also, I've already done Pratchett and Stein. So actually, we're probably over halfway through this series because towards the end of it, we'll be able to skip over because I already did them. But yeah, this was fun. As always, I enjoy doing these videos. And again, I mentioned in the past that actually it helps me because I'm working on some memoirs. Somebody coined the term a biblio memoir, which I liked, because it's a memoir that tells the story of my life through the books that I read. Having these big old lists from my bookshelf tours really helps me to, to write that. So yeah. So anyway, on that note, thanks as always for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe if you're new here and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.